So welcome in another little episode about the little bike. Technically is a scooter because, uh, well, I don't know why. Why scooter is a scooter? Because of the gap between your legs or because uh, no gears, no clutch. This bike is here for a very quick tire change. We have two brand new tires. Right here, 13 inch, very nice small tires. Uh, they are made by, yeah, nice. Uh, so we're gonna put them on. It's supposed to be just tire change, but I can see some rubber hoses sticking out on that side. So I'm guessing it's gonna be a little bit more. Let's get to it. So I heard the rumor from morons that uh, there is no point to balance such a small wheel as 12, 13, 10 inches like on the little Vespas. Okay, and don't balance them if you want. I will. My idea is if they have to balance the little shaft inside the turbocharger, they have to balance 13 inch wheel. It's a scooter, but it's still a uh, vehicle that drives on the road it's supposed to give you some kind of comfort and safety and stability when you drive it you can see this wheel is out of balance very clearly why not just balance it we have the weights that can fit on any type of rims uh, we can glue them we can connect them to the side of the rim there's a lot of way to balance the wheel i know it's a scooter i know it's go f i know the top speed is 50 maybe 60 Still, 13 inch wheel, it can already give you a shaking if you unbalance it, especially like that one, look at it. It's out of balance, so balance your wheels. Some rims have no bearings inside them. And they are like, for example, this wheel for a, for a scooter or some wheels on a BMW. They don't have a, a bearings inside the rim. Uh, some single, some single swing arm uh, Hondas, they don't have the bearings as well. That's why it's important to have a tool like this with the bearings already installed. This is, these are nice, precise bearings. They allow the entire axle spin freely with the wheel. Uh, when the bearings in the wheel are good, usually the axle is stable and the rim spins itself like it's spinning on an on a, on a axle. But in that case, uh, we lock this into the rim so the shaft spins on the bearings, on the balancer itself. Now, while I am mounting the, the wheels on the scooter, I can tell you that I used to ride scooters a lot. I like to ride them. I, I used to tune them a lot. I had a lot of highly tuned scooters that have been ridiculously fast. Uh, <laughs> one of them that brings up a good memory is a Honda Valaro, which was 110 cc. And I think this bike was going about 115 kilometers per hour. Uh, I enter a uh, moped drag racing with it once and I won in the category of uh, road legal registered scooters, <laughs> which that one wasn't. Anyway, uh, as you can see, this bike crashed. Most of the time, uh, when you have to remove the back wheel on the scooter, usually the exhaust is in its way and the exhaust is so close to the wheel that you have to remove the entire exhaust, like for example, on a Vespa LX50 Primavera. Uh, Piaggio Zip, most of the other Piaggios, lucky for me, on the Peugeot Speedfight 3, all you have to do is loose those two bolts that holding the exhaust, 
gently loose the bolts on the cylinder head and then the gap between the exhaust and the rim is just big enough to slide the wheel in and out. Also important when you mount the front wheel, some scooters have this uh, little what is called snail. This one is a snail that spins and by spinning it the snail spins the wire that goes to speedometer to show your speed. There is a groove on the rim. Sometimes there is one, sometimes there is two, sometimes there is four. And these two grooves, in that case there are two, they have to fit precisely between these two grooves. So be careful when you put this on because it's easy to match them perfectly and then when you put the axle in it, you squeeze it and you can break it. So they have to be opposite of each other. So just make sure when the grooves are up and down, those ones are left and right and vice versa. If those ones are left and right, those ones needs to be up and down. Just pay attention when you put it on. Last thing before I mount those wheels on, this is a proper way to use the yoga mat. The only proper way. Another thing, wheel axles, clean them. If they came out easily, clean them with the paper, put the grease on them a little bit, not too much, don't go crazy. Don't, this, nothing moves on that one, okay? Nothing spins on that one. The inside part of the bearing sits on the axle, but the bearing spins, nothing spins on the axle, so don't go with the grease all over. Nothing spins on this, okay? Nothing is moving around the axle. There are bearings to do that. But anyway, when they come out easily, clean them, put a little bit thin layer of grease. This grease is to protect it from corrosion, not to lubricate anything spinning on it because nothing spins on it. So protect it from the corrosion. So the next time you have to remove it, it comes as easy as it came now. Sometimes they stuck as hell. Sometimes they corrode it. You have to smash them from the other side so they jump out. Clean them with the sandpaper, put the grease on them. Remember, do not grease them too much because nothing spins on the axle. Bearings doing the spinning job, nothing actually spins on the axle. Another tippy tip, when you put the wheel back on and you have this type of uh, reader for the speed, spin the wheel and check if it's actually showing you the speed, if it's actually moving, because if not, you did something wrong and you have to do it again. It's bad if you drive out or you deliver the bike back to the customer and the speeder doesn't work. You have to do all this lifting and removing back again. Now, in, now we have a time to fix it if we mess something up. On most of the bikes you have to remove the caliper, especially on the bike that has a caliper on the both sides. Um, check the brake pads, that's the perfect time to check the brake pads. Blow them with air, clean them. Make sure the brake pads are worn evenly on the both sides and also at the angle, so they're not going side by side, especially if there is a more than one piston, like in this case, little scooter, four pistons caliper. Amazing, almost racing. So just make sure that uh, they evenly worn. If they going sideways, it means one of the pistons might be stuck and only one is doing the job. That can be dangerous because your wheel might locked up one day. So just look at the brake pads, visually inspect them if they okay. So just make sure everything is nice. Not necessarily clean because there's a lot of mess here and it's supposed to be. The, the brake pads are wearing and they're creating all this dust. This can be addressed when you're washing your bike. You can wash it more often, but usually you do a proper maintenance of the brake caliper when you change the brake pads. So just check everything is nice, there is no leakages, and then you can just mount it back on your bike, just like that. Beautiful weather, last touches, which is the screws for the battery cover. And then we make a small check of uh, all the electric equipment, lights, 
horn, blinkers, brake lights, headlights, starter, license plate light, dash light. Did I mention horn? There you go. That's why you have to check and check and check. No tail lights. We cannot deliver this bike like that. It's, it's going to be dark outside. No light on the back. Dangerous. Check, check, check. Just as I was expecting. Do you see the burned? The upper one is snapping in half. You can clearly see it. So, so we have to get into my woo, magic drawer with the light bulbs, and that's the one we need. Uh, there will be no long test drive on that one. Just. Uh, to see if brakes, suspension, wheels and everything works as it should be, the engine, the gearbox. I don't think I should ride this one for a long time. Hmm. Or should I? I have to test it. It needs to be safe. Ah, 